YouTube, and you'll be joining me in a little bit here. I'm out here on this uh, pier I've been showing the last couple of videos. Because today could be the final day I could be on this thing. Yeah, this is the pier that I was showing about. And I did kind of vlog from this pier, uh, from the RIP Catfish Bear Casino uh, video back in, uh, uh, oh man, it was a long time ago. I forgot when it happened. But yeah, uh, river's still rising. Uh, it's supposed to cross, uh, now as they say Wednesday, according to my weather app, uh, uh, the National Weather Service got it scheduled to be crossing on Wednesday. That means this platform that I'm standing on will be underwater. You see how I want to see how close it's going underwater? Let me show you right now. I don't know if you can tell or not, but that's how close <laughs> I was just out there. So I would figure 24 hours, this whole thing would be underwater. It came up at least uh, since I filmed this, when you saw this uh, on Sunday, it was two inches below, it was just coming up on the beams there. Now it's almost up and over. So, yep. I'll show this underwater when it does happen, but you probably won't see it till like Thursday night. So I got other videos I want to plan to do uh, before that. So we'll see this thing underwater eventually because river is supposed to be still rising. It's supposed to be cresting on uh, Wednesday. It will be tomorrow for you guys when the river is supposed to crest. So this will be underwater. All right, this gives me a chance to not just explain those beautiful lighthouses, why we have uh, some of these lighthouses along the Mississippi River, but uh, I'm going to just explain why the river is rising, why, uh, I don't know if you can see it or not, what those markers mean, and that number, what those numbers mean, if you see it right there, is what you're going to see right here on this uh, plaque. There's two of these plaques right here. I'll show you two right now. Yep, that's what it indicates. Uh, in 1965, this was two years before I was born, uh, river raised up to 24.85 feet on April the 28th, was it, when it crusted, in 1965. Of course, you read that the dike did not exist, and it cost over $5 million in damages around town. And yes, I want to show you something right here. They used to play baseball in rowboats over here. Now we're on the east side of the dike, uh, looking towards the riverfront, because that bandshell did not exist there in 1965. The bandshell originally was over in this general direction somewhat. The fountain was here in 1965, which we're going to see in operation later. That vacant land uh, back over there behind the fence, behind that road there, used to be Allied Steel. All that was underwater in 1965 up to the railroad tracks. And the ballpark before the renovations, the renovations was about eight years ago, roughly about eight years ago. And uh, in 1965, that was all underwater up to the... Uh, Let's get to the better position right there. I'll show you what I mean. So in 1965, we're looking inside the uh, baseball diamond. We'll be here in a couple of weeks. In 1965, that was all underwater. And we're looking at the, uh, you see that yellow safety fence bar right there? That's a fence line right there. On top of that is a uh, cement for the dugout. And the water in 1965 was just reaching the roof of those dugouts. Of course, in 1965, uh, those dugouts was not as big as they are today. Uh, actually, in baseball standards, they're still relatively small and narrow, but it was like one third of the size of the dugouts. So, uh, imagine the dugouts being one third of that size right there. So it's really they were really small dugouts. I remember those dugouts being really small. But right now, let's get to the history of the lighthouses. It's going to be pretty interesting if you're still watching at this point in this video. Okay, just kind of give you a little rough history on the, the lighthouse right here. There's uh, three of them left on our, on our riverfront, basically. And give you a rough history that I, what I know about it is basically they were built in the mid to late 1920s. Uh, before the lock and dam system was put in 
because the locking hand system was not for flood control, it was helped maintain a nine foot channel. But right now, uh, the river is rising, so I'd rather get this uh, kind of filmed right away in, in somewhat. I got a barking dog in the background, but we're going to go ahead and continue this anyway. But uh, the lighthouses served a purpose because before, before the locking dam system, there used to be dangerous rapids up and down this part of the river here in town. Very dangerous rapids. In fact, you will see uh, bubbling and churning water every so often, especially when the water gets low enough, you will probably see it. So those lighthouses just like uh, operate a little bit different than you see along the lakefront. Just letting you know where the shoreline is at and letting you know where the rapids is at. So it's kind of shining in a beacon, almost like a beacon basically. So you know how a normal lighthouse worked on the oceans and lakefronts. And it's basically worked the same way here on the Mississippi River. We're the only ones in, on the Mississippi River that has these as far as I know. And it's a pretty uh, interesting thing to know. So it's, but they, they put the dike in, they took out, I think there was like six of them. So six of them was almost like a street light going down, up and down a street almost. These were actually almost like street lights te technically. So basically, um, it was, I think there was six of them, but when they put the dike in, they had to remove three of them. And they left three up and it became uh, iconic to our city of Clinton, Iowa. So when you come to Clinton, Iowa on our riverfront, this is what people talk about uh, when they see Clinton, Iowa. When they come to Clinton, Iowa, they see these things on our riverfront. So we're making it kind of unique. It's kind of a, like a city icon somewhat. As you can tell, the the river is starting to creep up on this tower. The other towers are pretty well still out of water. So this would have been built right at flood stage, I would say, back in the, in the 20s. But remember the marking I showed you on the other ones? If I can get past this sign here. Uh, I don't know if you can see it or not because I'm not in the sun. The sun's not shining on it. But remember that marking uh, back in 1965 when it reached uh, 24.85 feet. But... Uh, in 1993, we came within, if I can get close enough to touch it, but let's put it this way, uh, take the next layer down, about halfway down the, uh, what it says, 24.85, go down about maybe uh, six inches. That's how high the water was in 1993. I wish they marked it. Because down at Davenport, they got a building down there, they mark all the flood levels of what year it, it flooded. I don't know why they didn't do it here, but in, 19, in 1993, it was, came pretty close to beating that record. came within six inches of that record, let's put it that way, during its uh, crest. I remember it crested like three times that summer. Uh, we had a wet spring, and uh, we had a nasty winter and a wet spring. That's what made the water so, so high. If I was standing right here, I'd be... Uh, the water would be uh, shoulder high, basically, if I was standing right yeah, here. Yeah, I would be, where I'm standing right now, the water would be technically shoulder to neck high. If I stood next to that lighthouse right there, I would be totally, the water would have been totally underwater. I would be, uh, actually I would be underwater, not the tower, but I would be underwater. So that kind of gives a little history of our lighthouses here. Oh, by the way, the lighthouses still work, but not the way it should be. They install just regular uh, lamp lights up there, so it just make it look like it actually still works, but it doesn't really. But I'll have to show you at night. Actually, let me show you at the end of this video. I'll show you what I meant by the end of this video. I'll bring the camera back down here. I'll show you what I meant. Uh, why they still work in that in a way but not the way it's supposed to be yeah just imagine uh what downtown clinton was like back in 1965 during high water actually the local paper uh we have here in town uh basically had a commemorative book i had that book in my possession uh for until, until 1984 and it actually got wrecked by uh, by a friend of mine. He just got a little jealous, I guess. But I was only born two years after the, the flood and all that stuff. But I was born in 67. That happened in 1965, the spring of 1965. There was one in 67, but I don't think it was high. But 93 is the one I remember uh, vividly because of the wet weather we had all spring. And we had a pretty decent snowfall, too, on top of that. But otherwise, uh, yeah. Just imagine what downtown shopping was like, like uh, in 1965 by rowboat. 
Yeah, in 65, uh, in 1965, I'd be right in this general area where I'm on this road right here, except down there. I would be approximately knee-high water, and up here is where the railroad tracks had, uh, basically where a line of sandbags was used uh, when they put it in 1965. I have to show you approximately what location. Oh, I'm going out of a little ramp right here, and now I would be at chest high. I would be neck high water almost right here. So, what a what a dip you make. Huh? So, in 1965, I'm standing approximately where the uh, sandbar or sandbags would have been. Uh, sandbagging would have been right along the railroad tracks, up along this little side here and up along there for quite a quite a few miles and that so that's where the sandbagging was took place here in town back in 1965 it's hard to believe that's 51 years ago i'm only uh 48 about ready to turn 49 in september we're going to just wrap it up but at the end of the closing i'm going to put a few seconds of the uh the lighthouses where if the lights lit up inside so you want to check that out real quick uh, before we officially call it a night uh, please like share and subscribe to our channel and we'll see everybody tomorrow when Angie and I will start booking and other stuff uh, tomorrow booking for our trip and planning other stuff tomorrow I think we're planning to go into the new Hobby Lobby that's just opened up just recently so we're gonna check it out okay uh, it's going to be a pretty busy vlog tomorrow, so I hope you guys join in. Bye, and don't forget, enjoy those uh, lighthouses that got lit up at night.